everybody, I'm back! I've been working on this video off and on for a year, pretty much, um, kind of since I first heard about Coquette, which was December 2021. It's one of my favorite aesthetics that I've gotten into a lot, and it really exploded in popularity probably late 2022. I like got off social media for a couple of weeks and came back and everyone was talking about Coquette like it was brand new. So I've been working on this video forever. I'm sorry if I sound kind of sick. I'm actually getting over COVID. Um, I avoided COVID for three years but finally got me. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into the video. I'm going to talk about what Coquette is and also some of the negative effects of it. Because you know me, I gotta be a Debbie Downer. Okay, so first I just want to talk about the origins of the aesthetic. I'm going to be looking down at my iPad a lot. Coquette is a hyper-feminine aesthetic that was originally created on Tumblr, but it really blew up on TikTok. That's how I originally found it. And the word coquette is French. It means a young woman who flirts. So, the aesthetic is really similar to in aesthetic that was popular on Tumblr back in the 2010s called Nymphet. And I've talked about Nymphet in my soft grunge video. So the Nymphet aesthetic was popular on Tumblr in the 2010s. Nymphet is a word that originated from the 1955 novel Lolita. It refers to a term created by the main character Humbert Humbert to describe a sexually attractive preteen. Ew, so obviously naming an aesthetic after that is super gross and we shouldn't do that. And another thing I've mentioned in past videos is that the word nymphet, the tag, is actually banned on Tumblr, thank god. Some aspects of Coquette come from the nymphet aesthetic, but there's less of an unhealthy focus on youth and age gap relationships and more of a focus on being hyper feminine and enjoying girly teenage girl things. And I'll get into that later. There's still issues with fetishization of youth, but I feel like Coquette is definitely a step in the right direction. It focuses more on being independent and loving yourself and, you know, being a woman. And another thing I want to say is that in this video, I will be saying women and girls a lot, but I'm not trying to exclude anyone. Uh, Coquette can be for non-binary people, gender non-conforming, masculine people, really anyone can be a part of it. I don't want to exclude anyone. I'm just saying it's typically a feminine aesthetic and I see mostly women and girls um, subscribing to it. Is that the right word? Ascribing? Subscribing? I don't know. But mostly women and girls but it's for everyone and I want to be inclusive, so I'm sorry if I just say women and girls sometimes, but it is for everyone, so just want to get that out of the way. I also want to mention a style known as Lolita, which is different than Nymphette and Coquette, known as Lolita, which is different than Nymphette and Coquette. Lolita is something that's been around for years. It's a Japanese style that features really over-the-top girly dresses and, you know, kawaii accessories. It has a very distinctive style. And a lot of people misunderstand Lolita. They hear the word and they think it's sexualizing minors. A lot of people find Lolita fashion actually very empowering, not objectifying. The over-the-top dressing is actually seen as unattractive to men because men have horrible taste. Last in that building was caused by Bomb Voyage, who I caught in the act of robbing the vault. Now, we might be able to nab him if we set up a perimeter. You mean he got away? Well, yeah. Skippy here made sure of that. Incredible! You're not affiliated with- And I just want to say, just because someone enjoys girly fashion and aesthetics does not mean they're sexualizing minors. I cannot stress this enough. If you see a woman or anybody dressed in a typically girly, youthful outfit and you say they're like pedo baiting or uh, sexualizing minors, that's on you. That's your interpretation and that's fucked up. You should re-examine that. It's really annoying how a lot of men think 
that coquette or Lolita is like a kink and it's like inherently sexual when it's not, okay? It's just fun to dress that way. And honestly, women and non-binary folk will be objectified literally no matter how they're dressed. And that's the fault of creepy men, okay? We shouldn't be blaming women for how they dress. We should be blaming the men who are objectifying us. So this next part, I'm going to talk about substyles and similar aesthetics to Coquette. There's different substyles. Some of these are dollette, which is very frilly and pink, literally imitating dolls. Another substyle is Americana, which features the color red a lot and takes inspiration from vintage fashion. I really like Americana because I love anything vintage. One of the most popular styles is known as ballet core, which is a romanticization of ballet from the fashion to the dancing itself. Not everyone who likes ballet core is actually in ballet. They might just enjoy the fashion of dance or watching videos of ballerinas. There's a lot of pink and femininity associated with ballet. And I myself love ballet core because I used to be a ballerina when I was in school. I did dance for 11 years and for six of it, I did ballet, so it's very nostalgic for me. Coquette overlaps with a lot of different aesthetics. You can see inspiration from like cottage core, old money, princess core, vintage aesthetics, light academia. I'll make a very unhinged Venn diagram to show how it overlaps. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to talk about what makes up Coquette. What is the fashion? What is the culture? And I want to say also, I used to consider subculture and aesthetic different. I feel like subculture involves political views a little bit more, and aesthetic is more based off aesthetic and fashion. But I think a difference is just that a subculture is more established and has been around longer. You know, punk and goth has been around for decades, you know, since the 70s and 80s pretty much. But Coquette is relatively new. It's only been around for maybe 10 years. So Coquette includes girly and childish themes, especially the colors white, pink, and red. If it's not pink, it just don't make sense to me. Like, what? what is this? What the fuck is this? Make it pink and make it pink quickly because it might be cute but it could definitely be cuter in pink picture frilly bedrooms with knickknacks that you got from your grandma stuffed animals white furniture and pastel pink bedding the fashion is fairly simple and understated unlike lolita which is over the top your typical coquette outfit will be light colors like white and pastels you see a lot of sweaters, skirts, dresses, and blouses. Most outfits incorporate tights, knee-high or thigh-high socks, or lacy crew socks. Shoes can be Mary Jane's, loafers, or small heels. Some people prefer a more casual look and opt for jeans, a hoodie, and converse. Jewelry is usually gold and diamonds are popular, but pearls are really, really popular and I love pearls. Gold heart lockets are also popular, like the infamous Lana Del Rey Coke Spoon heart necklace. Side eye. Side eye! Coquette fashion has a very classic, almost vintage style. It overlaps some with old money aesthetic being that it's very classic and put together. The makeup is often understated. You can see kind of the clean girl aesthetic as a part of this with, you know, maybe ditching the winged eyeliner and the full face of makeup and going for something more natural. Some favorite brands that Coquette Girlies love is Chanel, Dior, and Vivienne Westwood, which 
isn't attainable for your average teenage girl or even woman, you know, there's no way I can afford that. A lot of girls like Brandy Melville, boo, <laughs> boo Brandy Melville, we hate them. Uh, they are incredibly problematic. They only sell clothes that are size extra small and small, and they only show models that are incredibly thin, young, and white. There's some great videos on YouTube that go more in depth on Brandy Melville and why it sucks. I think something I love about the Coquette aesthetic is the emphasis on reading classic literature and poetry. It seems that there's a focus on being educated, not necessarily higher education, and not being judgmental of people based off their education, but there is a love for reading and learning new things, which I love so much because education is so important and a lot of us are lucky to live in places where women have access to education, you know? All right, my camera died, but now we're back. Continuing on, there are a few people who are very relevant in the coquette aesthetic. Someone who's super popular is model Lily Rose Depp. I don't really know what she does. I guess she's a model. I don't know. But the girlies love her. Um, actresses Elle Fanning and Emma Roberts and Sasha P... Pia Terce, I don't know how to say her name, but she plays Allison in Pretty Little Liars. The biggest inspiration for a coquette is, of course, Lana Del Rey. This place is so Lana Del Rey vinyl. Oh my god, so Lana Del Rey vinyl. Lana's personal brand includes classic Americana, old Hollywood glamour, sad love songs, and vintage inspired fashion. All her albums are popular, from her first album, Born to Die, to her most recent album, Blue Bannisters. However, the most popular era of her music has got to be her unreleased songs and demos from before she changed her name to Lana Del Rey. Her Lizzie Grant era has a ridiculous amount of unreleased songs that people are constantly digging up on YouTube and turning into TikTok audios. I cannot tell you how many unreleased Lana Del Rey songs I have saved on TikTok. Some people even consistently upload her songs to Spotify despite the fact the songs are usually deleted quickly due to copyright infringement. They just keep uploading them. If you want to listen to some of her unreleased songs, I'd recommend one of her first albums, which is called Lana Del Rey, aka Lizzie Grant, or the fan made collection called Die For Me, which has some of my favorite songs on it. I think this era is just so iconic because you have her being a trailer park queen, drinking Diet Mountain Dew, and also she would make these video collages that featured webcam footage as well as old cartoons and vintage movies. I also want to mention some other artists that are popular like Marina and the Diamonds, who now just goes by Marina, and Fiona Apple. And also, Ethel Kane is really popular right now, and I love her stuff. And the song Fade Into You by Mazzy Starr is the anthem for Coquette. Alright, I'm going to show you some really popular items, subjects, and ideas that give off the general vibe of Coquette. You've got candles, diaries and journals, flowers and gardens, skincare, self-care, and pampering. Perfume is incredibly popular, especially Chanel and Dior. Dolls and stuffed animals. Old architecture from the 20th century. Blair Waldorf from Gossip Girl. Makeup such as heart-shaped blushes by Too Faced and ColourPop, as well as the Hydration Lip Balm by e.l.f. Blonde curls. Heart-shaped anything. Cute knickknacks, especially vintage ones. Picnics and brunch. 
French bread, strawberries, and other fruit, honey, and charcuterie boards, sweets like cupcakes, ice cream, cake, and cinnamon rolls, and something else that's really popular for some reason is wired headphones, which makes me feel so old, although I still haven't made the switch to Bluetooth headphones. Okay, so I use wired earbuds, but I do have a very hip and very cool pair of Bluetooth Beats by Dre in rose gold that I got in 2016. So yes, I'm very hip and up on current trends. A large part of the Coquette aesthetic is the romanticization of Paris. <laughs> A lot of people talk about the Parisian aesthetic and show photos of the Eiffel Tower and city life in Paris. This fascination could be due to ballet originating in France or the luxurious yet simple feel of a Parisian lifestyle. Also, it could be because Paris is seen as the most romantic place in the world. Another place that appeals to a lot of coquette people is Hollywood. The general interest in Hollywood is focused on a world of glamour, like starlets from the 1950s, classic and silent movies, and sandy beaches. Yet again, Miss Lana is largely responsible for this interest. She has countless songs referencing Hollywood and California, such as Bel Air, West Coast, High by the Beach, and California. Lana's personal brand for her first few albums was vintage old Hollywood glamour. She constantly wore vintage style curls or 1960s bouffants. Classic movies are popular in the coquette aesthetic, but many modern films are incredibly popular as well. Some of these movies are Pearl, American Beauty, Lolita, Black Swan, Gone Girl, Last Night in Soho, The Love Witch, Girl Interrupted, in The Virgin Suicides. If you liked The Virgin Suicides, definitely watch Marie Antoinette and The Bling Ring, which were also directed by Sofia Coppola, and I am absolutely obsessed with The Bling Ring. I think it's my favorite movie ever. The TV show I see admired the most in this aesthetic is probably Pretty Little Liars, which is a teen drama that originally aired on ABC Family starting in 2010. The show focuses around four teenage girls who are being antagonized by a mysterious figure known only as A after their friend Allison disappears and is presumed dead. So there's definitely a dark side to the show. There's a lot of dark content, but it still features that fun feeling of being a teenage girl, going to high school, and it's just a very cute show. It's not very realistic. Like, they're pretty privileged and live in a really nice, mostly white town, but it's a nostalgic fave for me because I watched it when I was a teenager. Looking back, there's so much problematic stuff in it. But again, nostalgic fave for me. So I first discovered Coquette on TikTok, as well as many other young people. Well, I guess I'm not young, I just turned 25. I guess that's, that's still pretty young in my opinion. But there is definitely a lot of Coquette blogs on Tumblr. And something that I have discovered over the last year is something called girl blogging, which I kind of want to make a separate video on about girl blogging, the feminine urge, gaslight gatekeep, girl boss, all that. Girl blogging is something so distinctive. I don't know how to describe it. I truly cannot put it in words. It's just one of those things. If you know, you know. Girl blogging is something you do mainly on Tumblr. Some people consider you can do girl blogging on TikTok too. But it's very tongue in cheek and sarcastic. You see phrases like gaslight, gatekeep, girl boss, the feminine urge, female hysteria, and girl interrupted syndrome. Girl blogging often features photos from movies where the main character is insane or driven mad. 
like Black Swan, Girl Interrupted, and Pearl, the Gone Girl, Cool Girl monologue is practically scripture. Cool girl. Men always use that, don't they, as their defining compliment. She's a cool girl. Cool girl is hot. Cool girl is gay. Cool girl is fun. These photos will have captions on them that describe teenage girls' experiences, frustration with the patriarchy, mental health struggles, etc. You see a lot of photos created on the Whisper app as well, which is, oh my god, I downloaded Whisper and it's a shit show. <laughs> However, there's also photos that describe how much people love being feminine and how men will never understand the uniqueness of being a woman in society. I personally love girl blogging. It's a way to express frustration as well as celebrate being feminine with other women. I think it's mostly harmless, although there are unfortunately some people who use girl blogging as a way to promote eating disorders. So that will move into the Debbie Downer part of this video where I talk about the downsides of the aesthetic and some of the downfalls. Like most internet aesthetics, there's always a dark side. Coquette is mostly harmless and can be a very positive community, but unfortunately there's a large amount of racism, obsession with youth, and rampant fat phobia. I tried to include photos of all different kinds of people in my video, but it's like there's no photos of fat people. I have yet to see a, a picture or a video of a fat person involved with Coquette. And it makes me really upset because I'm a fat person and some representation would be really nice. The vast majority of photos on Pinterest, TikTok, and Tumblr are of incredibly skinny, young, white girls. You usually have to specifically seek out Coquette aesthetic, black girl, or POC to find representation. Obviously, it's ridiculous to exclude people because of race, okay? Unfortunately, women of color, especially black women, are historically either over-sexualized and seen as hypersexual, or the other stereotype is that they are non-sexual caretakers. Both these stereotypes exclude black women from femininity. Society has a narrow-minded, whitewashed vision of femininity. The chaste, pure white woman with blonde hair and blue eyes. White people need to include women of all races and examine how we continue to perpetuate these racist stereotypes, whether we do it knowingly or not. I'm white, so I'll never fully understand what it's like to be a woman of color, but some amazing commentary YouTubers I recommend are Madison Brown, Shanspeer, and For Harriet. They have some amazing videos. When it comes to gender in the coquette community, I haven't seen many men involved, probably because it's such a hyper-feminine aesthetic. However, men are absolutely allowed to be in touch with their feminine side and dress however they want. Just because the style is enjoyed by mostly femme people doesn't mean men or masked people can't also join in. Same as aesthetics of the past decades such as soft grunge and nymphette, ultra-thin, borderline malnourished bodies are the norm. We saw this phenomenon back in the 90s with the popularity of heroin chic models like Kate Moss. And unfortunately, according to trend forecasters and who the fuck ever on TikTok, heroin chic is back in and thin is back in. Kim Kardashian has had her BBL revert. It's just so frustrating that like we were finally starting to accept fat women and thicker bodies. And I mean, we were barely getting there. Like... We made a lot of progress in the last decade, but we still have so far to go, so it's very frustrating to feel like we're moving backwards. A lot of people may preach body positivity online, but at the end of the day, we still don't view fat people the same way as skinny people. Society is obsessed with diet culture and losing weight. We still idolize thin bodies despite how far we've come. There's still countless blogs on Tumblr that promote eating disorders, known as ED blogs, that encourage girls and women to starve themselves. 
these blogs post thinspo, thinspiration, or pro-anorexic content that's incredibly triggering photos of malnourished bodies. I think it's important to remember that eating disorders are a mental illness and these people do need help in therapy. But at the end of the day, these blogs are promoting a dangerous lifestyle and they are affecting so many impressionable young girls. A lot of ED blogs will attack fat women for simply existing. So I recommend just reporting them and blocking them. I always struggle saying this word. The fetishization of youth is also a problem. I think using the term coquette, which describes a woman, as opposed to nymphette, which refers to a child, is definitely a shift in the right direction. There's still a misconception that this aesthetic is reserved only for teenagers, but that isn't true in my opinion. I think the reason there's an emphasis on youth and teenage girlhood is that this aesthetic was created by teenage girls. I think a style that Coquette is similar to in some ways is Japanese Kogal, a substyle of Gyaru fashion. This style features schoolgirl uniform inspired outfits due to the fact that it was started by Japanese schoolgirls who modified their uniforms. I think another reason Coquette gets a lot of flack is because we know society and men hate anything that teenage girls love. It's seen as stupid and immature and unimportant, which is bullshit. And I know a lot of people use the term healing their inner child on TikTok, which I think is very important to, you know, if you missed out on your childhood or your teenage years, heal your inner child and do things you didn't have the chance to do when you were growing up. I mean, I still collect stuffed animals, I have figurines, I still have Barbie dolls, but I don't think we need that as an excuse. I think you can just like what you like. You don't have to have the excuse of healing your inner child or working through trauma. You can just like pink, you can like Barbie dolls and stuffed animals, you can like what you like. I don't see a problem with that. My motto in life is, if it's not hurting anyone, who cares? How is it affecting your life? Let people like what they like. And I mentioned this earlier, but some people accuse coquette girls as pedo baiting or basically baiting older men or uh, over sexualizing themselves. But honestly, a lot of the TikToks I see, girls don't show their faces, which I like. I think it helps protect minors. And I wish I wouldn't have showed my face on Tumblr so much because there's so many creeps out there. But again, it is men's fault for over-sexualizing us and viewing childish and girly things in a sexual way. That's their fucked up problem. And in the Nymphette aesthetic, there was a lot of... DDLG content, which I won't go into because that's a whole nother thing. Um, and some of my family watches my videos, so I don't really want to talk about that in front of them. DDLG does involve age gap relationships and role playing as like a, a daddy in a little girl, which is. Uh, and I know I just said, like whatever you want as long as it doesn't hurt people, but I feel like you're skating on thin ice with that. I know it's a kink. Maybe I'm kink shaming, but it just, it, mm, I don't like it. I don't like it. I feel like it is harmful to young women and fetishizing little girls is objectively bad. Okay, I'll say it. The point I'm trying to make at the end here is that just because a style is inspired by a certain group doesn't mean it's exclusively reserved for that group. And aesthetics are for everyone, regardless of age, race, ethnicity, gender, body type, ability, or sexual orientation. We can all enjoy pink and girly things, classic literature, Lana Del Rey. We can all dream of Paris and Hollywood. We can all do whatever we want to feel beautiful and empowered. 
A final note, life doesn't end at 18. It doesn't end at 25 or 30 or even 40. Women don't expire at a certain age. And don't let anyone ever tell you what you can or can't enjoy. I also want to touch on kind of toxic femininity and when Coquette can kind of veer into a pipeline to right-wing toxicity and toxic gender roles because there are YouTubers and content creators like Classically Abby, Girl Defined, Miss Midwest, I think is her name, who make content that it's brainwashing pretty much and they teach a very Christian, Republican, whitewashed way of living that enforces outdated gender roles and is very exclusive, only including white women. Miss Midwest is actually a white supremacist and it's very covert. You don't notice it right away outright. You know, she'll kind of start out saying, oh, well, this is classic femininity and this is how to be feminine, but then she slowly peppers in these white supremacist ideals. And a lot of young girls, it they miss these dog whistles and these red flags. So it can be dangerous. We need to remember that you can be feminine without adhering to gender roles and traditional thinking. Obviously, part of feminism is you know, women should be able to work in a workplace or be stay-at-home moms, whatever makes us happy, whatever empowers us. And so I don't want to, like, talk down to anyone who prefers to a more traditional role of staying home, being a mother, taking care of kids. That's totally fine. That's your prerogative. Good for you. I could never be a mother. I could never be a stay-at-home mom. I don't want children. And I have so much respect for stay-at-home moms because they work hard as hell. I think we need to remember we can be coquette and still be feminist. It's very important. All right, I'm going to wrap it up there. I was going to say I have a couple videos I'm working on right now. One is about the Gossip Girl reboot because I am so mad that they are canceling it. Some other videos I've been thinking about doing is one about fem cells and female hysteria and girl blogging a little more in depth about that. Um, I could make an incredibly unhinged video about Pretty Little Liars. I could make so many unhinged videos about Pretty Little Liars. I am obsessed with that show. Uh, I'm working on a video about Riverdale. And always, I love making videos about aesthetics. So comment below any uh, videos you'd like to see, if there's any aesthetics you'd like for me to explore. I'm hoping to be making more video essays. Uh, again, I've been working on this one for like a year and just refilming it because I wasn't happy with it. But third time's a charm. I'm hoping this turns out okay. I really appreciate everyone who likes my videos, comments, and subscribes. It means so much to me. And if you want to keep up with me, I am on Instagram. My username is Fairy Girl, and my Tumblr. I'll put my Tumblr uh, blogs on the screen. So, Tumblr is what I'm most active on. But thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I appreciate everyone who supports the channel. Thank you.